once again to have you join us this morning. We are just, uh, hey, we're, we're glad to be here on this morning and able to come into your homes and for you to worship with us and us to worship with you and all. And we just, we invite you to lift up the name of Jesus. So if you would join us in the word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this time in which we can come together as your children and worship you. Where we can come together as your children and lift your name on high. Where we can lift up our hearts with thanksgiving and with praise. Um, because you are worthy of the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you. We praise you. We just exalt you on this morning because, once again, you are worthy of it all.
The song says, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. There is no God that's better or higher than you. He turned water into wine. He opened the eyes of the blind. He brought us out of the ashes. He's a great God. Our God is a champion. I don't know about you, but I just feel good about blessing the Lord because he's so good. He's so great. He's so incredible. And listen, we love him. We love him because he first loved us. Thank you, worship team. I appreciate you. Uh, you allow the Lord to use you to bless the name of the Lord. Uh, once again, we are grateful to be in your homes on today. We're grateful to be uh, in your vehicles. We are grateful. Amen. Soon we'll be on your TVs. Amen. And so we're grateful. We're giving God all the glory we have been doing uh, extensively through our series, Discovering God's Will for Your Life, Discovering God's Will for My Life. Amen. The thing about God's will, it was from eternity past, well thought out. <laughs> and it, it, listen, God's will is going to take a lifetime. He, he unfolds it a portion at a time, a day at a time. Amen. And, and as we go on, the scripture says, uh, it says this, uh, then shall we know if we go on to follow the Lord's directives and, and, and guidance and, and, and as he unfolds his plan, God's plan is too comprehensive. It's too comprehensive. He, he cannot tell you everything. Amen. All at once. And so little by little, he's unfolding his plan. We left off with John 8, 32. John 8, 32. Uh, uh, and, and, and the Lord said this, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. We, the freedom that God gives comes through God's word. Amen. There's a song that says that you came speaking your word to me. I was, I was discouraged. I was let, I, I felt let down and I felt like I was at the end of my rope when you came speaking words of affirmation. I don't know about you, but there's words of affirmation in the Bible. You came speaking encouragement. You came saying stuff like, I can do all things through you. You came saying that your joy is my strength. And, and something about the word of God, it is alive. It is powerful. The Bible says his word is quick, is sharp, and is powerful. He even said the words that I speak, they are spirit, they are moving, and they are life. And when God begins to proclaim his word in your life, oh my gosh, it will wake you up. It will pick you up out of a horrible pit. It will place your foot on a rock. It will establish your going. It will put a new praise in your mouth. That's what Psalms 40 says. He says he picked me up out of a horrible pit. I don't know about you, but listen, I've been in a horrible pit, a pit of despair. Uh, the psalmist said, why are you cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. Psalms 42, hope thou in God. And when the word of God, when the word of God is proclaimed. And listen, I asked, uh, one, I asked my pastor this. I asked my pastor this. I said, how do we unleash my pastor? Uh, Pastor Henderson, I said, how do we unleash the word of God? You know what he said? By opening up our mouths. When we open up our mouths and put out the word of God, it unleashes the word of God. And we know what the word says. He sent his word. He sent his word and he healed them. Healed them of what? Healed them of their backsliding ways. Heal them of their, their deceptive ways. Heal them of their uh, uh, ways that cause some of us, uh, some of us just have uh, patterns that we've developed. And, and those patterns are, 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 are patterns that cause us our own demise. And God sends his word and lets us know that you are a new creation. You are a new project and you are a new entity. By the grace of God, we're going to try to complete uh, this series. Amen. Uh, and so we can move back into Ephesians and, and pick up on the, on the third verse. By the grace of God, if we don't, we may need one more week, but we're going to move expeditiously. 
So we left off with John 8 and 32 said the word of God is what gives us freedom. And we said it is not just an academic. Uh, some, a lot of people know about the word of God. Many people can quote the word of God. But listen, quoting God's word is not living God's word. I'm going to say that again. Quoting God's word, singing God's word, talking about God's word is not living God's word. And you can know all about a person and not know the person. Never have met them in your life. But the type of experience we're talking about is an experience where you actually live out. Would you walk with God? Would you talk with God? Would you communicate with God? The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. He walked with God several hundreds of years, and he has sons and daughters. Listen, when we walk with God, he makes our lives better, better. Difficult days become bearable. When we walk with God, and God is a very present help, I've got to tell you that Psalms 46 and 1, you can talk to him late in the midnight hour. You can, you can talk, you can be, listen, he said, don't even worry about what to say. I will give you what to say because he is alive. He is moving. He is there. He is available. Listen, God is in your life in your mind, in your business. It's a relationship. I think that's what we've been saying all this time. This is a relationship. It's interacting with the almighty God. Interacting. So the scripture says, the second part of, so Romans 12 and 2, it says, don't be conformed to this world. Uh, this age, the, the schemes, the methods, the methodia, the, the operations of this world, the attitudes, the impulses, the way this world works. And, and listen, I'm not going to even go there, but we see that this world has some very evil uh, ways about it. But God said, you're not like that. This world, some people in the world are evil. Some are hateful. Some are mean, but not all are evil. Not all are hateful. Not all are mean. Amen. Not all are evil. Not all are hateful. Not all are mean. And as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are to emulate. We are to display. We are to, re we are to reflect who Jesus is. A God that loves. A God that is kind. A God that is patient. A God that prefers others. A God that is willing to sacrifice and lay his light on the line. That's who we are to uh, uh, exhibit. We, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we, we can call ourselves exhibitors. We are to exhibit the person who we spend our lives with. And if you are spending time with God, you will begin to exhibit God-like behaviors. God-like behavior is this. When somebody has crossed you, when somebody has disrespected you, when somebody has gotten smart with you, when somebody has mishandled you, your response is, the Bible says, you, the, the scripture will come to you, the Lord will tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those that do you wrong. Do good to them. Those that mishandled you. Listen, and the Bible says, I hear the scripture, when you love those that dislike you, when you love those that mistreat you, you heap hot coals a fire on their head. A person that wants to fight with you wants you to fight back. But when you respond good for evil, blessing for cursing, oh my God, that, that, that turns things around. Amen. We are the light. I hear you, Lord. The Bible says you are the light of the world. We are the salt. Of the earth. Salt, what does salt do? It holds back corruption. It's a lot of corruption going on in the world. And if we would be salt, not salty, that's the problem. Stop being salty. You're too daggone salty. And when you're too salty, can't nobody, uh, can't, can't nobody, you can't, they can't take your palate. <laughs> you, well, you, you, you can't be taken on their palate of taste, rather. We ought to be salt, hold back co corruption, and we ought to season things. And we ought, they're, 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 when you're on your job, you ought to be a difference. 
In your marriage, you ought to be a difference. In your community, you ought to be a difference. Listen, when you go to the grocery store, it could be chaotic. But when you show up, you are to be, you are to be, catch this. You are to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. Write that down. Say, I'm to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. When you see two people in a heated conversation and, and, and you just start praying and you just start being that person that God has called you to be, you ought to be able to calm down the situation. When husbands and wives, when you go over, go into the home of a husband and wife, that have been arguing, you can sense what's going on, and you are the peacemaker. The Bible says we are the peacemakers, or if you will, so we are to be thermostats, not thermometers, and that's the problem with some of us. We, the, 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 our, our surroundings are dictating to us, and therefore, if it's hot, we hot. If it's cold, we cold. If it's down, we down. But no, we are thermostats. We set the tone, if you will. We set the stage, if you will. We make things right because we represent our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get into our text. We're talking about freedom, freedom, freedom. In the Word of God, in Jesus' teaching, where, where, where we left off, in Jesus' teaching, obedience to God is true freedom. Obedience to God is true freedom. This truth is quite different from thinking of the thinking of most people today. Listen, for it takes God rather than our own personal feelings and ambitions as the one good. The freedom in view is not a freedom to do whatever we wish according to the dictates of our own fallen selves, but a freedom from our fallen selves and power and guidance to act in accordance with God himself, the source of all goodness and life. We're not free. We're not being set free to do what we wish, but we're free to live a holy life, to live a life that's peaceable, a life that is impacting, a life that is glorifying to God. And as we said before, I hope we can coin this phrase. When we are impressed with the impressiveness of God, we become impressive. When I, Marlon, become impressed with the God of the entire universe, who is all-wise, all-powerful, all-creative, all-loving, all-giving, all sharing, all healing. I can go on and on and on about the attributes of God. When I become impressed with his impressiveness, and I don't know about you, but the God that I serve is impressive. He will blow your mind. Spend a little time with him. When Moses went into God's presence, let me tell you how impressive God is. When Moses went into the very presence of God, the Bible says when he came down out the mountain, that his face glowed. His face glow. When you get in God's presence, your face will glow. How does it glow? Your behavior changes. You don't curse like you used to. You begin to say kind words. You don't be condescending. You begin to lift people up. You begin to encourage people. You begin to say, you know what? No, you go ahead. I was in Sam's Club, and I'm not giving a shout out to Sam's Club or nothing like that, but, but I made up my mind. I want to be like the Lord Jesus. And so we, we, what do Christians do? Those that spend time, they prefer either others. And so how did I go? I told this lady, and I'm like, you go ahead ahead of me. And she said, oh, are you sure? I said, absolutely. I did this on purpose. <laughs> We've got to live the life of God on purpose. How do men know that we're believers? By our love of one another, by love that we show, by our behavior. Nobody can see my heart, Monique. Nobody can see my heart, Samad. Nobody can see my heart, Paris. But they can see my actions. My actions is the gateway to my heart. You can say all day long, oh, look at my heart. Judge, my, look, you know my heart. I, I, the only way I know your heart is by your actions, if you will. Your actions, your actions is, is the window. Thank you. Your actions is the window to your heart. So if your heart is good, your actions will be good. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's move on. The word of Jesus which is the Logos, it is, his, it is his teaching, the gospel, most emphatically, it is his word. The necessity for firm adherence to it is at once seen when we remember that 
this word and this alone is spirit and life. Outside of his word is death. He says the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. They are life. I hear you. Ezekiel said, the Lord said to him, look at these valleys full of dry bones. And the Lord asked Ezekiel, he said, son of man, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, Lord, I have no clue. He said, I passed around the bones. They were dry. They were brittle. And the Lord said, son of man, prophesy to him. And so the, the, the Bible says, Ezekiel says, I preached to the bones as I was commanded. And the bones, this is what the word of God does. The bones begin to get connected again. And let me tell you something. If in your life, your life is all discombobulated, it's all everywhere, your mind is over here, it's double-minded, your feet are over there, and, and you're just a mess up, mess, a messy mess. If you begin to get into to the Word of God and speak the Word of God over your life, your life will come connected again. That's the problem when our children are acting up. Speak the word. Tell them the word. Tell them that they can win. I'm praying for you. I love you. You are more than the conqueror. And listen, greater is he that's in you. And speak the word. Somebody write this down. I've got to speak the word over my chaotic situation. Speak the word over your messed up marriage. Speak the word over your jacked up mind. Speak the word of God. His word is powerful. His word is light giving. His word. And so when, when, when Ezekiel preached to them bones, they got connected. And then they were just, a, a, then they became an exceeding army. Army. When you speak the word, your life becomes organized. You've got to speak it over your life, and then you've got to comply with it. Are you hearing me? You've got to speak the word. Get into the word. Let's start back. Rewind. Get into the word. Let the word get into you. Speak the word and comply. We've got to declare the word. We've got to decree the word. And we've got to deliver with a lifestyle on the word of God. Let's go on. Jesus identifies himself with his word. John 15, 5 through 10 Reading from the Message Bible, I said Jesus identifies himself with his word. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation is intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is a dead piece of wood gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you met yourselves at home with me and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows he who he is when you produce grapes or produce a harvest. When you mature as my disciples, I love you the way my father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my father's commands and made myself at home in his love. Jesus identifies himself with his word. His word, in an essence, is who he is. Amen. A man is no bigger or a woman is no greater than their word. And Jesus said, me and my word are one. That we're one. If I said it, I'm going to do it. Amen. And so the word of God is the vehicle of Jesus. Let me say that again. You ought to write that down. The word of God is the vehicle, the vehicle, the vehicle of Jesus, bringing him to us and us to him. Did you catch that? The word is the vehicle of Jesus, bringing him to us and us to him. And they continue steadfastly, according to Acts 2.42, in the word of God and in fellowship. 
They continue in the word of God. In the word, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's safety, there's freedom in the word of God. When we get into the word, it the goal is to get us to Jesus. That's why Paul says, I want to know him. The psalmist says, I want to dwell in his presence. Amen. For in his presence, there is the fullness of joy. If you're sad, if you're frustrated, get into his word. Let his word get into you and let it lead you. The word of God is the vehicle to Jesus. Let's look at Colossians 1, 21 through 23. I'm moving expeditiously, but I want us to get some key things. Listen, Colossians 1, 21 through 23 says this. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But listen, catch this. We said the word of God is important. But you must continue to believe the word and stand firmly on the word. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news, which is the gospel, which is the word of God. The word of God. Anyone who remains in the teaching of Christ has a relationship with both the Father and the Son, remaining in His Word. Amen. Thus, the remain is not only a mark of discipleship, but it is His very essence. Jesus said this in John 8 and 32, those who continue in my work are my disciples. Now, I'm going to tell you this. We have been set free. We are free. But unless you remain in His Word, continue in His Word, day in and day out, you will be free but you will be bound. By position, you will be free. In practice, you will be bound. You've got to get in his word. You've got to get in his word. Let his word get into you. You've got to proclaim his word. And then you've got to live his word. And check this out. This is something that the spirit of God has to do in your life. As we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, you can't change yourself. So I, you ought to write that down. Listen, Marlon, I can't change myself. Mo, you can't change yourself. Uh, Shirley, Joe, Bobby, Robbie, Tracy, uh, uh, whoever, whoever, whenever, however, God has to change you. God has to change you. So what, what do we do so that God, it said, we are to work out our salvation, our deliverance, for it is God in me, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. So when I cooperate with the method or the process that God does, the progress of my life begins to change from one glory to another glory. I'm pulling off that bad attitude, I'm breaking up with the old, and I'm, and I'm making up with the new, if you will. Amen? So Jesus is connected to his word. And then we said it, John uh, 14, 1 through 7, uh, and a portion, we, we go down, and, but I want to like, write that, John 14, 1 through 7. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. The truth is a person, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. I want you to write this down. Without the way, you cannot go. Without the truth, you cannot know. Without the life, you cannot grow. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, and so in essence, without the way, who is Jesus? You cannot go. Without the truth, you cannot know. Without the life, you cannot grow. Christ and the truth of his word makes us free. Psalms 36, 7 through 9. Real quick, he says, How precious is your unfailing love, O God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. You feed them from the abundance of your own house, letting them drink from your river of delights, for you are the fountain of life. 
the light by which we see, the fountain of life, the fountain. Everything that I need is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the source. The son said, he is, you are the source of my strength. You are the source of my strength. Psalm 16, 7 through 9 says, in, 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 in other words, you can write that down. You will show me the path of life. Everything is in your word. In the path. Listen, your word leads me to you, and then your word teaches me how to live my life. Thank you, Lord. His word leads me to him, and then he teaches me how to live life. Amen? John 8 and 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If we follow Jesus, he will give us clarity. Light causes, brings clarity. What does light do? Light causes growth. Light gives understanding. Amen. There's a, vitamin D comes from the light. It's healthy to be in the light. Amen. I want to give you three things. Saving faith consists of three elements. This is commonly referred to by theologians, which are Latin terms. It's notitia, a census, and fiducia. Now, I'm going to help you with this. Notitia is knowledge. It is the intellectual component of faith. It involves an understanding of the basic biblical facts regarding salvation. A census is assent. Which means it goes from one step beyond, it goes from one step beyond notitia and confidently affirms those facts to be true. Fiducia is trust. It acts on them by personally appropriating Jesus Christ as the only hope for salvation. We have been saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. I have been saved, I'm being saved. And I will be saved. Amen. Freedom. Amen. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. I want to deal with this. We, uh, the Bible says as we renew our mind, we renew our mind in his word. Um, David says that uh, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin. I've, 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 I've treasured your word, God. Your word is everything. And I said last week, the Bible said that his word is like honey in the honeycomb. And, and he says, your word is good. And I don't know about you, but when I read the word of God, I, I love it. I've been reading the word of God for uh, over 30 some years, over, I, I, all my life, all my life. And every time I read it, I discovered something that I hadn't seen before. Maybe the same passage, but a deeper meaning. And I just love the word of God. Uh, but he says, we renew our mind by getting into the word of God, letting the word of God get into, get into us. And it is the Holy Spirit that is doing the work. As I uh, yield, as I cooperate, this process or progress is happening. Now check this out. He says, once my mind is being renewed, then I can prove. I've got, listen, we're going to get a little doctrinal. The word prove is uh, where we get the, 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 the clarity. It, it, what, what prove literally means is this, to put to the test for the purpose of approving. He says, once my mind is renewed, then I can prove. I can test like a person tests certain metals, a, a, a metal detector. And so he says, when my mind gets in sync and my my perspective, my per excuse me, my perspective changes. And so I can prove what is the good, acceptable, and pleasing will of God. And so it will help me to approve or find that thing tested meets the specifications of it actually being the genuine, direct will of God of God. You know how you can smell stuff? It looks like leather, but it's really pleather. <laughs> if you put fire on a piece of a piece of, of material that looks like leather and it's not, it, it, it probably will melt like plastic. 
But all leather does is get a little burn mark. It may make it look better. So he says you'll be able to prove the genuineness of the will of God for your life. And then we said that God's will is good, acceptable, and perfect. It's like a coin, if you will. It's not good, good meaning that's one will, acceptable, that's the second will, and perfect, that's the third will. No, this is a triplet, which is one. Really, I'm going to tell you something. A coin has three different sides. Get, I bet you didn't know that. A coin has the head side and the tail side and the quarter. has the head side and the tail side and has the ridges around it. That's the third side. So he says that God's will has three sides to one. Okay. Now check this out. Good is where we get the word agathon, which means beneficial, rich, bountiful, suitable, moral. James 1.17 says every good and perfect gift comes from God. Okay? Then he says that God's will is acceptable, eurestine, pleasing, satisfactory, and welcome. I've got to read this. His will is pleasing, satisfactory, and welcome. I'm going to give you the other point. And, and listen, um, let me read the scripture about God's will. Uh, Isaiah 53, 1 through 11. And I'm, 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 we're going to cut down on time, but i, I got to read this. His will is acceptable. It's pleasing, satisfactory, and welcome. Let me give you this third point, and I'm going to read this scripture, and I think we're almost done. Not only his will is good or beneficial, acceptable, uh, but it's perfect, which we get the word teleos. Check this out. This blew me away. Teleos or perfect means without error, or mistake, it is flawless, it is complete, it is absolute, free from any need, short of nothing, completely fulfilled. Now, in Isaiah 53, 1 through 11, it makes some statements about the Lord. It says, who have believed our report? It says that it pleased the Lord to bruise him. What? How does it please the Father to bruise the Son? Because at the end of the day, the results of the son being crushed for our sins, we would receive salvation. I said this, that, that God's will is good, it is acceptable, and it is, it is perfect, without error or mistake, flawless, complete, absolute, free from any need, short of nothing, completely fulfilled. Listen, the process that God takes us through to fulfill his will does not always look like it's without error or mistake or it's flawless or complete or absolute. When I lost my brother at the age of 18, that didn't look like it was, it didn't have error or mistake or flawless or it was, or, or, or it, was, it didn't look like it was complete or absolute, free from need, short of nothing, completely fulfilled. It looked like something had went wrong. When I lost my business, I had a major business, a six-figure business. When they took it away, it didn't look like it was without error or mistake or it was flawless or it was complete. It didn't look like it. It didn't feel like it. When they lie on you, it doesn't feel like it's perfect. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time won't be compared, Monique, to the glory that which will be revealed. Listen, I'm not where I should be, but the process that God takes me through, pulling off and tearing down, he said, he said you've got to root up, pluck up, tear down, then build. And I'm, and I'm mighty afraid to say this, that the process of what God is doing in our lives God will not build on tracks. He won't build on a dump. He will take, he will take, uh, 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 he'll bring the contractor in. He'll, he'll bring this one, the surveyor. He'll, he'll bring all these key people in. He'll bring the superintendent in. And he says, here's the plan. I want this custom made individual to look like this. 
not semi-custom. You're unique. There's not nobody else is going to be made like you. And so what he does is he tears up some stuff and he 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 destroys some stuff and roots up some stuff and then he digs the foundation and, and then he uh, sets the forms up and then he pours the cement and then he brings four by fours in and then he brings uh, uh granite and he brings all these things in because the Bible says one day he's going to present to himself a church, a Marlon, a Monique, a Samaj, a Paris, a Stacy, a Lisa, a Teddy, a Theonis, whoever your name is, wherever you are, when he's get when he gets done with you, he's going to present to himself a church without spot or wrinkle or any such blemish. So he's working on you. And listen, I know it hurts. I know it hurts. But even the, the songwriter said there will be ups and downs, smiles and frowns. Listen, that's the way it is. Ups and downs, smiles and frowns. But when God gets through, you'll be satisfied. We're done. We're done. We're done. Uh, listen, I want to invite you uh, to uh, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not difficult. It's not hard. And all you have to do is just accept them. These things that we have been discussing over the several, the past several weeks. The Lord, first of all, loves you. He said, John 3, 16, I love you. And he said, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. I love you so much that I gave my only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And listen, I got to tell you this. You don't just live once. There is a life after this life. And what you decide on this side, uh, who you're going to serve, who you're going to give your life to is going to determine the life that you experience on that side. Don't live in hell and die and go to hell. I've got to be honest. But the Lord Jesus loves you just like you are. And I want to encourage you. I want to walk with you. And I, I, I encourage you to receive him in your life. Receive him in your life. And you can do it simply as this. Say, Lord, I never talked to you. Or I thought I spoken with you. But Lord, they told me that you can save me. I'm a mess. I'm undone. My life is just, a, I'm, I'm just in a rut. But the, but, but, I, but the pastor told me, Pastor Henderson told me, that all I have to do is say, Lord, I receive you. And then he said, Lord, would you forgive me? And so you can say that in the comfort of your home, while you're watching me, even in your car. Lord, I, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I don't know much about you, but I need you. Would you come in and change my life? And if you pray that, he will change you. He will change you right now. He will do a radical change and put a new taste in your mouth, put joy in your mouth. He will turn you around, pick you up, and you will begin to start a new journey of becoming what God has created you to be. And once you discover God and then you discover your purpose, your life will take on a new meaning. Amen. I'm praying for you. We love you. We can be reached. I can be reached at Marvin.Henderson, churchbeyondwalls.net. If you feel led to be a blessing to this ministry, you can do it via Cash App. That's the dollar sign, Church Beyond Walls, or at uh, our Venmo platform, which is at Church Beyond Walls. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Be encouraged. We'll see you again this same time next week, maybe a different place. We love you. We are praying for you. Be blessed.